This is Notepad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. As you have just witnessed, uh, we have heard from three MPs uh, from Zuraida, Isna Raisa, as well as Yobi Yin. Um, the tone is uh, absolutely remarkable because uh, YB Zuraida is uh, towing the line by the DG of Health saying that it's a Delta variant, uh, saying that this was not supposed to take place in the first place, that the MPs have met on the 26th of July, uh, agreeing that if a case uh, were to be an outbreak, uh, then uh, we have to postpone uh, or suspend the parliamentary special briefing session. Uh, but the following two MPs is basically more of uh, the need for the parliamentary sitting to take place. Uh, in fact, uh, there's some comparisons into why other countries around the world um, can have their parliamentary sitting, except for Malaysia. What makes Malaysia something special? Uh, that is yet to be answered uh, by uh, some of the members of the uh, parliamentarians. So in the next few hours, we are going to unpack uh, some of the conversations that has taken place just now, as well as what has taken place uh, earlier today, so that we can try to understand what's happening uh, for the week to come. Uh, later on, we will have uh, Raja Ahmad Iskandar Faris, the Communications Director of REFSA. He'll be joining us very shortly. But for now, the key player that we need to look at is, of course, AMNO. Uh, AMNO Sp Supreme Council will be calling a special meeting tomorrow as political pressures continue to mount on the administration of the Prime Minister. And among the topics that will be discussed will be uh, uh, regarding the palace's rebuke of the government that happened on July 29th. Uh, this was uh, mentioned by the AMNO Secretary General, uh, Ahmad Maslan. Um, and through his Twitter posting, Ahmad Maslan said that the online meeting uh, will also discuss the issue of emergency ordinances, as well as the postponement of the Day One Rakyat seating uh, that was scheduled earlier today. AMNO itself is believed to be experiencing internal tensions with uh, Vice President Ismail Sabri Yaakob, who is also the Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, and... Uh, versus that of the president of AMNO, which is uh, Datuk Sri Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. Um, and it is pulling in very polar opposite directions to a point where there could be some factions in terms of AMNO cabinet members might be having different thoughts from AMNO backbenchers. And because of this split, we're going to see some ideas of how AMNO is going to uh, decide with one voice uh, if it's possible, following the AMNO Supreme Council meeting. Now, to recap, AMNO uh, as a body has said uh, that uh, they no longer support uh, the administration. Uh, that uh, statement was issued by the president of the party, uh, Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. However, as uh, we have all come become accustomed to and all of us are aware of already for the past few days, uh, Barisan National uh, MPs, uh, in this sense comprising nearly everyone of AMNO MPs, have reaffirmed their position of supporting uh, the Prime Minister. So as you can see, we are not too sure where AMNO stands when it comes to the official standing of the party. Uh, one is going the other way, another one is going the opposite way. This is, of course, going to create a lot of uh, conversations in the week to come when it comes to how uh, the uh, continued uh, support of the administration of the Prime Minister is going to be garnered. On top of that, of course, the big uh, element that we have to discuss is the opposition members. Uh, because uh, earlier today, uh, as we discussed uh, during this time yesterday, uh, opposition members did uh, gather at uh, Merdeka Square um, calling for the opening of the parliament and uh, the resignation of the Prime Minister, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin. Uh, the protest, of course, was following the government's decision uh, to cancel the final day of the Dewan Rakyat's five-day special sitting, which has been postponed indefinitely uh, because of this COVID. But we know uh, that they're going to try to reconvene two weeks from now. That's what we heard. But a definite date has not uh, been set. Uh, we have something uh, here uh, for you to uh, look at. 
Among MPs present were opposition leader Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and former Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad, alongside a dozen of lawmakers from the opposition bloc. Anwar reiterated his call for the Prime Minister to resign, claiming that the ruling government has collapsed. The group tried to march towards the parliament but were denied entry by police. We'll go for a short break. When we come back, we'll have a chat with Raja uh, Iskandar of Refsa. Uh, welcome back. This is Notepad. We're doing this live. Uh, joining us is Raja Ahmad Iskandar Faris, the Communications Director of Refsa. Um, Iskandar, thanks for gracing uh, this show yet again. Um, it's unbelievable that uh, the last week over the past seven days that we have last spoken, uh, a lot has happened, and that is by by a mile an understatement. What's your take on 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 the ongoings uh, of the country right now? Well, Ibrahim, thank you for having me yet again. Uh, what we have uh, last week, I think, a lot of Malaysia shifted from watching uh, streaming services to our local uh, production, which is the Parliament, and <laughs> things seems to take a hit. Uh, we didn't expect in four days a lot of drama can be uh, can be extracted from the, the session. But yeah, I think we'll discuss a bit more after the clip. All right, yeah. The, so the clip that you're referring to is, of course, uh, the opposition leader, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, uh, because he claimed today that the prime minister has lost the majority of support in parliament. Um, as the parliament remains suspended, uh, Datuk Sri Anwar claimed that the Perikatan National Government has indeed fallen after MPs withdrew their support from Muhyiddin's administration. Uh, he says that uh, there's a lot of things uh, happening, but of course the most important thing is over what, uh, 107 MPs were with him at the Dataran, signaling that he now has the majority. Here he is uh, talking about, not just about the majority, but on the concept of what just happened, which is the fall of democracy. Let's uh, hear the clip. Belum pernah berlaku dalam sejarah pelanggaran hukum semuanya rupa oleh Perdana Menteri dan Kabinetnya. Penghinaan kepada institusi raja dan ini yang menyebabkan kita berhimpun pada hari ini. Yeah, so uh, Iskandar, to recap, right, he says uh, membelakangi rakyat. Uh, membelakangi undang-undang, membelakangi parlimen, uh, derhaka kepada yang di-Pertuan Agong. These are very strong statements. Do you see any basis uh, in Datuk Sri Anwar making such a statement? Well, we seem to be on a roll on the unprecedented events happening to Malaysia. Uh, so, uh, But first, let me put things uh, into context. Uh, what we see today uh, is history repeating itself. Uh, PN is actually taking a lift out of... Uh, BN's authoritarian playbook. Uh, last year, last time in 2015, we see uh, Parliament being uh, being locked up from the opposition members when, when they wanted to discuss about 1MDB. Uh, now, today, we see they, them being locked out of Parliament to go into uh, sitting and uh, ask uh, the necessary questions. So this is because the PM itself himself sees the writing on the wall. Uh, it is PN is currently operating in such a way that uh, they believe that they are on their last legs and uh, they won't hesitate to use uh, whatever means necessary. This means uh, any arrays of state apparatus, government levers to stay in power. This includes shutting down democracy. So uh, going back to your question on Friday, this uh, this follows a three uh, announcement of postpone, postponement that led to then a the inevitable suspension of uh, session for today. Uh, so we refer to the statement of uh, YDPA and also the, the letter that leaked uh, to the public. So two things are clear. The government has uh, tried to pull a wool on everyone's eyes with regards to the emergency ordinance revocation. And number two, they have failed to carry out the task requested by the uh, Yang Deputuan Agong, which is to discuss the emergency ordinance in parliament. So I, I, I can agree with the statement that 
this is unprecedented, uh, unprecedented and the government is trying to do its very best to stay in power in whatever means necessary. Do you think that the government is uh, still under pressure? Do you think that they've got it under control? What's your opinion on this? Uh, they definitely ha hasn't gotten it under 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 control. Uh, this they are currently operating on a survival mode uh, from one day to the other. I don't see that they have any long term plan. Even the uh, after the royal rebuke following the. the, the were strongly worded statement by the palace. They were still combative in, in their response, uh, trying to, uh, in Malay, they were called menegakkan benar yang basah. They still try to uh, defend their position, uh, even whatever other legal experts uh, may say. So we can see that, that they are trying their level best to stay in power uh, using whatever means necessary. You know what I find interesting today? I find uh, that mm. the solidarity amongst the uh, opposition MPs uh, was seen. Um, this was the first time uh, that Tun Mahathir stood side by side uh, Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal, uh, Anwar Ibrahim, uh, um, uh, Dr. Zul, uh, Lim Guan Eng, and of course even uh, Said Sadiq, who uh, for the longest of time has been distancing himself uh, from these guys. And yes, it is, guys. Um, do you see that this is uh, uh, something of a, of a show of strength? Or is there something more deeper, more meaningful uh, in terms of uh, the many, many opposition parties banded together? Do you think that there's something substantial to this? Or this is merely a show of force, just to show that 107 MPs are indeed turning up today? Rahim, so what happens today, I think, is a testament that hardship uh, begets solidarity. Uh, in the lead up to today, there has been many uh, protests, uh, namely Hartal Doctor Contract and also Hashtag Lawan, uh, Kluar dan Lawan, and many other uh, protests uh, resulting from the uh, failure of the government to manage COVID pandemic and also the other mismanagement. Uh, what follows the protests were heavy-handed uh, response by the authorities, arresting, questioning them, and uh, harassing them in different manners. So I think that gave uh, a pretext or a, a strong enough cause for the opposition to band together today. Uh, they did stand together and uh, strongly condemned the PN, even putting a motion of no confidence against Muirin uh, following the royal rebuke. So, on the opposition side, I think it's clear that they are against Muhyiddin. But the, the one that we are not sure is what about the other anti-Muhyiddin forces? Uh, what are they doing and are they going to act on uh, their words or just merely uh, not, uh, not doing anything uh, on, 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 their, on their part? Are you, are you talking about AMNO now? Yes, yeah, so uh, it's quite clear that I think for AMNO, um, the ball is now, everyone's focus is now on AMNO's uh, next step. They have been pushing statements after statements, uh, threatening to pull out from the government, yet they are in an identity crisis. They are constantly yeah, criticizing so the government, trying to uh, distance themselves, but at the same time, reaping the benefits of being government. So we, the, the riot yeah. is to where do they stand? Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, the rakyat knows. They stand on two paths right now. Uh, that's clear. The issue now is whether or not the rakyat needs to know whether they are still standing on two paths or they can go on, on a path and stick to it. That's all that we need right now. Uh, we will go for one short break. Uh, when we come back, we'll discuss further with Iskandar of Refsa. Thanks for joining us. This is uh, Notepad, your host Ibrahim Sani, live tonight, uh, straight from my house uh, into yours or wherever you are supposed to be. I hope you're at your home. Uh, we have uh, Iskandar of Refsa uh, on the show. We'll bring him up very shortly. Right now, we've got a, a, a special report that we have uh, with uh, Dr. Farhan Rosli of the Selangor Task Force because he says that 
even if uh, the parliament was postponed uh, because of political reasons, uh, there are still some underlying issues or concerns that need to be addressed with. Uh, taking a closer look on this issue from a public health perspective, what are the indicators used in deciding whether or not uh, parliament can convene safely uh, in the future? Because it appears uh, that the pandemic is here to stay. So here is Dr. Farhan uh, on the issue. When you shut down parliament, I do not care whether you shut it down for political reasons. Let that be the reason for you to state why it's closed. But the moment you use data and science as a guide to shut down parliament, it throws everything that we have done over the past one and a half years in disarray. Because now you are going to make the public confused about what are the indicators for you to shut down a certain place, for you to cordon off a certain place. So I can give you 10 places right now where they have 12 to 14% positivity rate and it's still open. Now you tell me about the cases in the PPV. How come you're not shutting down the PPVs even though you have uh, cases which is more than 1%? How come you're not shutting down all the vaccination centers? Do you see the big ramifications that occurs when you do this without using science and data accurately and properly? And now people are going to question every single thing that you announce after this. Is the data correct? Is the science correct? Are you sure that what you're saying is truth? And because of what you have done, you have broken down any sort of trust that the public has in the pandemic response. Dr. Farhan also stressed the need for a national testing policy that will set a precedent on how the government can begin to open up the country. Definitely, number one, you need to develop a national testing policy. You have to decide who are you going to test, when are you going to test, how many times are you going to test, and what tests are you going to be using to be acceptable for you to say that this is confirmed positive. And this is for items that must be detailed out and must be implemented on the whole national level. And you cannot be picking and choosing where you change the policy. Because when you do this, definitely you will never be able to exit the pandemic. The structure of what you are about to be doing does not shut down. And this is what we mean by opening up. And parliament was the litmus test for us to see how we can actually operate normally at full capacity. And if we cannot even get this right with 222 people right, definitely we cannot even think about opening up any other sectors of the economy. Yeah, so that was uh, Dr. Farhan Rusli. He is uh, an assistant professor at UIA, also um, uh, the director of the Slango Task Force. Um, joining us back is Iskandar Faris of uh, REFSA. Uh, Iskandar, there are two big ideas that I want to explore with you following what uh, Dr. Farhan was mentioning. The first is, of course, the erosion or the possible erosion of the national public uh, trust uh, with regard to the pandemic response. And the second is long-term solution, because if you can't get it right for 222 people, actually it's 220, uh, two MPs have passed away and their seats have not yet been replaced. If you can't get it right for 220 people, how are you going to get it right for you know 36 million people or 32 million people? Uh, let's go with the first one, uh, Iskandar. Do you think that the public trust is going to be eroded uh, when it comes to managing uh, the COVID uh, because of the uh, issues surrounding the parliamentary sitting? So, Ibrahim, I think uh, that there, are, there will be questions coming up from this, uh, more questions than answers. Uh, it's unfortunate that data and facts have been used and uh, massaged in a way to to justify uh, the locking down of parliament. Uh, ultimately, this will dent the credibility and trust uh, in MOH, especially as an institution. Why? Because uh, this reinforced the double standards or dual digest perception that it currently uh, has. Uh, as Dr. Farhan pointed out, recent cases in PPV, there were 204 workers tested positive, but only closure for it was only closed for one day for sanitization. Other places has COVID cases as well, uh, but they only close for one to, two, one to three days. In Parliament, we detected 11 out of uh, 1,183 cases uh, of people tested positive. Uh, then Health AG decides to close down for two weeks to do risk assessment. So despite 
And also, despite his concerns, the DG was pictured attending the PAC committee proceedings today at Parliament. So people will ask, why are the double standards? And this doesn't help that the timing coincides with uh, what was supposed to be a, a, a royal rebuke of the law minister last week. So the timing is just nice for them to avoid any questions or any uh, consequences from that revelation. So uh, I don't see how the government can steer away from that kind of perception. And this raises more questions in the future. What kind of, um, because the government is quite familiar or quite linked to uh, shifting the goalposts, how, how can we guarantee that special parliament sitting, although they say can continue in two weeks, will be uh, allowed to go on? And what about the, the parliamentary session in September? Will this still be on if uh, they decide to? So these are the different questions that can come up because of the flimsy excuse that they have given to close down parliament uh, based on uh, the supposed facts and data that they cited. Yeah, just to recap, uh, there are two big uh, dates that we've got to think about when it comes to the parliamentary sitting for this year. Um, late October, which is the budget or the Belanjawan sitting uh, presentation, as well as September, um, the presentation of the 12th Malaysia plan. Um, other than these two highlights, uh, there aren't any other dates uh, that was um, signposted to be had when it comes to the parliamentary sitting. Technically, uh, the government does not need to have a parliamentary sitting um, other than these two dates. Uh, do you think that uh, that is the issue here? Because, you know, we don't even have a definite date for the reopening of the uh, parliamentary sitting for this round. Um, when do you think the parliament is going to open? The honest answer will be when they are comfortable enough to, to, to face parliamentarians. Uh, so uh, what we have now, because of the postponement, is uh, denied opportunity to scrutinize the pandemic management approach, uh, the lockdowns, the national recovery plan. And in the longer term, uh, if uh, we, we still postpone the, the parliament, maybe the budget will be uh, tabled later, 12 measure plan might not be tabled, uh, this year. So there are many implications from uh, this, uh, I would say, undemocratic suspension of parliament. Um, and we also have this uh, matter of the emergency ordinance hanging above our heads uh, because of the revo because that the revocation didn't happen. And the, the, the young Deputy Agong uh, confirmed this. Uh, it's still in effect uh, till February 2022. So delaying uh, the parliament session, even though because, because the parliament session is up to the uh, prerogative of the, the PM. He can call the parliament when he wants. Uh, delaying them would do no justice to the rakyat. The rakyat suffers. Uh, and the, in the wider whole, Malaysia, the economy overall suffers. Of course, Refsa is the research for social advancement. Uh, you're looking at policy. Um, and you're looking at blueprints uh, that is done both at the legislative aspect but also um, at the governmental aspect or the governance aspect. Uh, because of the parliamentary sitting being suspended, uh, there's not much items that can be scrutinized when it comes to policy, be it healthcare policy or the economic policy or any other policy for that matter, because there's, <laughs> because there's no parliamentary sitting. Uh, does this uh, provide some sort of a gridlock for you when it comes to the advancement of Malaysia right now? Uh, I think it's not just for us. Uh, many other think tanks and many uh, stakeholders are basically waiting for parliament. Uh, what we have now is uh, the prolonging of an, of an undemocratic rule. Uh, before this, we have emergency rule for for a few months uh, since January uh, that ended uh, just today, uh, the day before today, yesterday. And uh, now we are in a state of limbo. We don't know what's going to happen. And in fact, the, the emergency audience are still going to be in effect. So we have semblance of the emergency still with us. Um, it's quite frustrating in a way to keep saying the same thing, but no 
no positive response uh, given by the government. I'm sure many other think tanks, intellectuals, uh, researchers feel the same way. Uh, some of the, the proposals that we have put out are not uh, are not new. We've been talking about it since uh, early earlier this year. So it's frustrating to see that the government fails to, to acknowledge that and to take other other points of views into the picture to combat this pandemic together. I believe if they, they, they are humble enough uh, and willing to admit that some of the measures that they've taken are, are not uh, effective, not efficient enough to mm. combat this pandemic and save yeah. livelihoods, uh, that they, they yep. can do better to incorporate other ideas and implement them. Thank you. That was Raja Ahmad Iskandar Faris, the Communications Director at REFSA. This was Notepad. Stay safe, stay tuned to Astro Awani. It's going to be a busy week for the rest of us here today. Uh, until then, thanks very much for watching. I am Ibrahim Sani.